everybody welcome back to my channel if you're new here my name is Rachel and I am knitting not right now but most of the time today I thought I would bring you along with me because it is a very special day today is mine and my husband's third wedding anniversary so congratulations and happy anniversary to us I thought while he's at work, I would do something special for him and crank him a pair of socks. I'm going to try and get these done before he gets home. We'll see if that actually happens. Um, but everybody stop before you say, oh my goodness, Rachel, that's so nice. That's so thoughtful. Um, yes, it is. But also don't be impressed because I've had this yarn to crank into socks for him for over a year. Okay, so I'm sorry, but better late than never. And what better day to be better late than never than your wedding anniversary? So that's what I want to do uh, to surprise him when he gets home. Let's see if I can accomplish this. Let me grab the yarn and I'll show you what we're going to make. So this is the first colorway. It's a beautiful, beautiful navy blue. I think this is a hedgehog fibers. It was so long ago. Sorry, so long ago that I don't remember. Uh, maybe I'll look back on footage I took when we were at. Anyway, so here's the story of how DJ got this yarn. We went to Starlight Knitting Society last summer when we were visiting my family in Portland, and I tried to make a point to go visit Starlight every time I'm in the Portland area. This time DJ was able to go with me and he picked out two awesome, beautiful skeins for me to crank into socks for him. And I don't know about you, but for me as a maker, when my partner purchases specialty luxury yarn for me to then make something for him, that just makes my heart go a pitter patter. If anyone else did that, I would be offended and, and just like oohed out and, and, uh, and think that was like so presumptuous and rude. But when DJ does it, it's, um, basically the cutest thing I've ever seen in my life. So <laughs> here's the first skein that I've had for over a year. Let's crank it into socks. I need to find the second skein though, because I want to try and make two pairs of socks, uh, and have them both be contrast. So like the one pair with this as the main color and another pair with this as the contrast color. So let me dig around and see if I can find the other cone. I, I wound these into cones like immediately after we got home from our trip and they've been in cones for a year. Yeah. Okay. Let me find the contrast. Hang in there. Stand by. Okay, so I just dug this storage bin out of my closet in this craft room, and I guess I was wrong. I didn't wind both of these skeins onto cones, but I did um, or wind this other one into a cake. So let me grab this for you. This storage container is what I keep the skeins or scraps that I know I want to use on my Dean and Bean circular sock machine. So basically this is a bin of sock yarn or yarn set aside specifically for cranking. Okay, so this kind of neon, neon yellow, neon greenish yarn is perennial yarn which is 60% superwash merino, 25% surrey alpaca, and 15% nylon in the colorway neon lime. So then I definitely think this one is hedgehog fibers because I feel like I remember at least one of them being hedgehog fibers. Here's my drill. I've gotten some questions about this attachment and this was purchased from the Dean and Bean website with the machine package I got, it came with it. So it's basically a rubber puck or rubber, I don't know, rubber puck on a long screw and you put it in your drill, tighten it so it's secure. And then you can put your cone on it and the drill will move the cone for you 
to wind it in from cake or hank form into cone. So I'll just go ahead and do that right now. Something that is really non-negotiable, I think now is using the drill attachment to wind cones. When I actually purchased my machine and it was finally shipped to me after it had been in production, this item was actually omitted from the package. So I did reach out to them via email and said, hey, I think the cone winding attachment was not put in my package. Could I get that sent to me? And of course they were so apologetic. They sent it right away and they included some extra cardboard cones. But anyway, all that to say, when I first got my machine, since I did not have the cone winding attachment, I wound a few cones by hand. And keep in mind, since you're typically going to be working with fingering weight yarn, that is a lot of yardage to wind onto a cone by hand. So it took hours. It took absolutely way too much time. So definitely make sure you have this cone winding attachment so you can use a drill before you get started with your machine. Must have item. Alright, so that is wound onto the cone and now I have this new system that I obviously didn't have when I wound that blue skein onto its cone is I put the labels inside the cone so they're tucked away in there and so if I am sitting on a, on a skein of yarn or a cone of yarn for over a year, when I go back to finally use it, I will actually have access to the label and knowing what yarn it is. So this I am fairly certain is hedgehog fibers and I'm sure the label is somewhere around here but anyway now we have two cones ready to crank. The next thing that I need to do is I need to find the tracing of my husband's foot. I kind of have a file of several people's <laughs> foot tracings like I have my parents, I have my younger sister, I meant to get my older sisters but I forgot when I, when we were in the same, you know, physical space, uh, we don't live near each other. Anyway, all that to say, I need to find my husband's foot tracing so I can make sure I have the correct measurements to crank some socks for him. So let me go to my little, you know, storage area, AKA a stack of crumpled papers and grab it. Okay, here's the stack. Let me just go through here. None of those are DJ's tracing. So the tracings of my family members were not in that pile. So I need to figure out where I would put a separate pile of feet tracings. So I need to think about that. I found them. You know when you put something somewhere safe and then you have no idea where the safe place ended up to be? Um, well, I found it. Here we go. All right, so as with my other sock cranking vlogs, I'm not gonna show you the tracing of this foot because it's none of your business. Um, if I sent someone a tracing of my foot, I wouldn't want them showing the whole internet, whatever. Okay, so here's the tracing and I have already written the notes to myself of what the target width and target length should be. So. I'm good to go ahead and start and gauge swatch. Let's go. Okay, I have made it to my cranking station, AKA two steps across the room, so we can get started. All right, so the first thing I need to do is determine what needle or what cylinder is in my machine. It's been a while since I was cranking, so I don't remember what cylinder this is off the top of my head. So I'm just counting half of the needle spaces and that will tell me what the cylinder size is if I multiply that number by two. And I ended up counting 36 needle spaces, meaning it's the 72 needle cylinder, which is exactly the cylinder I wanted to use for DJ sock, so I was happy about that. Next, I grab another cylinder, and basically I'm just harvesting the latch hook needles out of that cylinder on my lap and putting it into the 72 needle cylinder, which is what I will have in use. And I need to have every single needle space 
filled for the sock that I'm making for DJ. So the 72 needle cylinder is the largest cylinder that I have and it is great for so many projects, but I will say being the impatient person that I am, it is kind of annoying to fill in every single needle space for this just because there's so many of them, but this is actually probably my favorite cylinder to work with because the finished fabric is so structured and beautiful. Now that I have every single needle in, I am going to turn on my light so I can see and I am going to apply some lubricant to the machine. I'm grabbing the bottle of the Blaster Dry Lube and if you watched my last sock cranking vlog, I'll link it up above, but I am not really convinced that this is the dry lubricant I want to be using on my machine. It leaves a really chalky residue and I, I'm just not a fan. But anyway, once you apply the lubricant, um, you are going to crank a few rotations just to make sure that it's dispersed and all the needles have a little bit of a coating of the lubricant. And then next, you are going to put on your setup bonnet. When you are putting your setup bonnet on, it's a little counterintuitive if you're not familiar with how the machine works, but you're going to put one of these markers or, or rings on every other needle. So even though this is the setup bonnet for a 72 needle cylinder, there are only 36 metal rings around the perimeter of the setup bonnet. That is not a mistake. You just want to make sure that you are putting it on every other needle and then once you start working with yarn you'll see that it works out just fine. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up this portion. Right now I'm just joining in the yarn that I'm gauge swatching so I'm grabbing that blue yarn that will be the main color for the first pair of socks and since I am gauge swatching I don't need to start with waist yarn. I can just go ahead and start with my working yarn, put my soft weights in and crank. When I'm gauge swatching, I try to crank about 100 rows, 75 to 100 rows, but I quickly found out there was a break in this yarn from when I wound it, so I only cranked about 50 rows, so I'm going to work with what I have and not worry about cranking a new gauge swatch. It will work just fine for me, but I am going to measure the rows per inch over two inches as opposed to four inches, and I'm confident that that will turn out just fine. And guess what? It did. So now I am winding the swatch back onto a cone and I'm putting it on a new cone. So that yarn I just worked with is separated from the main cone. So I don't run into that problem again where I run out of track basically without realizing it because that really puts a, a I don't know, it messes up your plans. So I'm putting it on a separate cone so I can better visualize when the yarn is running out. And now that I know my gauge, I can go ahead and calculate the number of rows to knit and get going on the actual sock. So since this is the third wedding anniversary for me and DJ on the day I filmed this, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I thought I would take this time lapse to just tell you a little bit about our wedding. So originally our wedding was meant to be on March 24th, 2020 that was actually going to be our two-year anniversary of dating so it was it's a special day for us but if you remember 2020 specifically March 2020 you may um, already know why our plans did not go the way we planned them we originally wanted a very small wedding so we were going to have just a simple ceremony with our immediate family so we had booked an Airbnb, this beautiful Airbnb in Oregon wine country, and we were going to fly out there. It was during my spring break and get married. My older sister was going to officiate. It was going to be so special. I'm getting kind of emotional talking about it, actually. Um, but of course, that didn't happen. We were going to have this beautiful ceremony and then a wonderful reception with our extended family after um, a few days had gone by, but I really just wanted that special time to be with my family and with our families together and to celebrate our love, and uh, that didn't happen. 
what ended up happening was we delayed the wedding, we postponed it, and didn't really have a plan of what we would do. And then by the time July came, we were just, you know, we were sick of this limbo, and, and we just wanted to be married. So we, I got all the paperwork done. We found a justice of the peace. She lived like an hour away. So we, we made the appointment. We drove out to the middle of nowhere and got married in her yard. His DJ's parents were there. Um, one of my friends from my PhD program was there to take pictures and my family watched on Zoom. So the only footage we have of our wedding is grainy Zoom recording. We don't have very many photos. My mom sent a bouquet to my house from a local florist. I forgot it. We forgot DJ's wedding band. So like the wedding was just not at all what we envisioned. But at the end of the day, it was our wedding and it was so special. And it's a day I'll never forget. It's a day I'm so grateful for. So I don't know, maybe if you're a bride watching this or if you're getting married soon and you're really stressed about the wedding, I hope this doesn't add to your stress. I hope that rather maybe it encourages you that, you know, things are going to go wrong, whether that is a whole global catastrophe that interrupts your special day or you forget an item. At the end of the day, you are still going to be married and your wedding is going to be a symbol of your love and a celebration of your love and uh, just focus on that. So anyway, I still have a lot of complicated feelings about the wedding and the wedding day just because there's so much joy mingled with so much sadness because my family wasn't able to be there. TJ's grandmother wasn't able to be there. It, ju it just wasn't what we pictured. But at the end of the day, like I said, we are married and that is what matters and that's what's important. So anyway, the time lapse is over. So let's move on. Okay, I have the first sock cranked and I'm ready to crank the second sock. But first, I need to find the cord to plug in my little ring light that clips onto the mast of my Dean and Bean machine. This is what came with my machine. So I'm not sure if they still use this kind, but if you are purchasing the Dean and Bean sock machine, um, you just may want to be thinking about where to set up your machine where you can have this light always plugged in because the battery does die pretty quickly, but the light is super strong when it's at full strength and the best way to keep it at full strength is to keep it plugged in even while you're using it. So I need to do that quickly and I'll change the angle so you can see from a new perspective while I crank this second sock. Okay, so look who just got home. So I have to go finish um, without you knowing what I'm doing. Okay. Oh, thanks. Okay. Huh? Okay. Okay, don't look. Okay, so now I really need to put the pedal to the metal and get these socks finished. Originally, I wanted to crank two pairs of socks, but since DJ got home, I am just going to crank one pair of socks. But anyway, I wanted to point out that this is an eight times speed. So if you're watching this and thinking, oh yeah, uh, cranking a pair of socks is, is no problem. Um, it's of course much faster than hand knitting. I'll probably say this in every sock cranking vlog, but it's not like pushing a button and a sock pops out or, you know, like putting a piece of paper in a printer and an image is printed on the paper. You are manually working this machine at every step of the process. So yes, it's much faster than hand knitting, but there is still labor required. So don't get it twisted. Anyway, now I am about to finish these socks, get these ready for DJ, and we'll see how he likes them. Okay, I'm all done cranking, so now I just have my waist yarn cut, and I'll just crank till it falls off the machine. Ta-da! All right, now that I have two of these, my next step is to sew the toes closed. The nice thing about hand sewing your toes closed, you're gonna do this with a kitchener stitch. I've heard this called the chimney kitchener stitch. I don't know if that is the technical term, but basically you are uh, stitching a seam 
that is invisible and you then you'll remove your waste yarn. But the nice thing about this is that you could crank 10, 20, 30, however many pairs of socks and pile them up and leave the toes to sew closed later. So you can kind of um, assembly line tackle your sock cranking, I don't know, strategy. So you don't have to sew the toes closed the same time you crank the socks, but I'm doing it here, but it is nice. You can leave it for later if you want to get a day of cranking in and then leave the toes for maybe when you're watching a movie or, you know, you're at an appointment in the waiting room. So that makes them a very nice portable project where you don't need your machine for that part of the process. Okay, I already gave these to you, but I'm going to give them to you again because my storage was full so I couldn't show you. Ah. Okay, do you recognize this yarn? Starlight, July 2022. So how do you feel about the turnaround time of that? If I'm being honest, it's probably pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> pretty quick? That's right, pretty quick. Do you like them? I love them. I was gonna make it um, the other pair with the green the lime green, neon yellow as the main color, and the blue as the contrast color, but you came home too fast. So it's not my fault. Thanks. You're welcome. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Love you. Aw. We did it. Okay, so that's it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like. Subscribe to my channel and turn that notification bell on if you want to be notified of my next upload. Last but not least, if you don't already, head over to Instagram and follow me at Rachel is Knitting. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Okay, bye.